Hi everyone, my name is Will Fritch. I work in the Healthcare Associated Infections Program at the Vermont Department of Health. Today I'll be talking about safe injection practices, including information from CDC's one and only campaign, which emphasizes using each one needle and one syringe only one time. I have four objectives for this presentation. First, I'd like to cover the basics of injection safety and set the stage for the rest of our talk. Then, we'll review some outbreaks that have actually resulted from unsafe injection practices to better understand what's at stake and the harm that can result from lapses in injection safety. After that, we'll discuss drug diversion, a subset of unsafe injection practices. And finally, we'll review some of the resources available to you related to these topics. Diving into it now, there are three things that every healthcare provider should know about injection safety. First, needles and syringes are single-use devices. They should not be used on multiple patients and they should not be reused at any point. Second, medications from single dose vials or from IV bags should not be administered to multiple patients. Third, it's best practice to limit use of multi-dose vials and when they have to be used, to dedicate them to a single patient whenever possible. Each of these key points attempts to interrupt one or more common pathways for disease transmission. While there are many more than shown here, on this slide you can see five of the most common routes of disease transmission related to unsafe injection practices. They are failure to use aseptic technique when preparing or administering injections, reusing the same syringe for more than one patient, reusing a single bag of saline for more than one patient, reusing multi-dose vials after they've expired or after they've been opened for too long, and reusing single dose vials more than once or for more than one patient. Looking at a more granular level, we can see here just how the reuse of syringes can transmit pathogens to patients and cause outbreaks. On the left-hand side, we start with a new vial, needle, and syringe. Medications that, that is drawn up is administered to a patient who in this scenario is infected with hepatitis C. At the point of in injection, there's backflow into the needle and syringe contaminating them both. Some things to note at this point in the scenario are, in real life, our patients don't have giant blocks of text on their chest that say HCV infected, as we see here. As such, we need to treat all potentially infectious bodily fluids as if they are, in fact, harboring pathogens. Additionally, the backflow process is not dependent on aspirating or pulling back on the syringe, and contamination might not always be apparent or visible. So as with the previous point, since backflow and contamination is possible, we should assume that it happened and only use these equipment one time. Unfortunately, that's not what happens here. So moving to the right of the patient, we can see that this provider removes the used needle and affixes a new one. Now, perhaps that's a sign that they were trying to prevent transmission of pathogens, but unfortunately it doesn't actually address the contamination in the syringe. So when they then dip back into that multi-dose vial, the hepatitis C that contaminated the syringe now contaminates the vial, resulting in exposures to any patient receiving medications from that vial down the road. Before we start a review of some actual outbreaks, here are some of the safe injection fundamentals and steps you can take to protect your patients. First, practice effective hand hygiene before preparing or administering medications. See that the preparation is occurring in a clean environment away from contaminants or patients, and make sure you're using aseptic technique when drawing up from files. See that they're cleaned and that you're um, drawing up with a new sterile needle. Additionally, single means single. Needles, syringes, uh, tubing, connectors should only be used once and for one patient. The same goes for single dose vials. Limiting the use of multi-dose vials can help prevent some of the transmission scenarios, like the, the one that we saw on the previous slide, um, but when they must be used, they should be stored and labeled properly and discarded appropriately. They should also be dedicated to one patient whenever possible. Now we'll review some actual recent examples of outbreaks that occurred due to unsafe in injection practices. Since 1999, over 200,000 patients have been notified of potential exposures as a result of incidents and outbreaks involving unsafe injection practices. Unfortunately, this number just keep, keeps continuing to grow. Um, shown on this slide are just a handful of headlines from these types of situations. And unfortunately, these are only a small fraction of what is taking place on a regular basis. We're gonna take a closer look at a few. Starting with Texas, in 2015, they experienced an outbreak of hepatitis B and hepatitis C at one of their acute care hospitals. Through the investigation process, it was uncovered that a nurse had been reusing the pre-filled saline flush syringes in the IV lines of multiple patients. 
It's particularly tragic because her intentions were good. She thought this was a safe practice as long as she wasn't aspirating or drawing you know, back into the syringe, um, and she was trying to conserve resources. So, of course, you know, as we reviewed earlier, we, we know that backflow can contaminate syringes even if it's not visibly occurring, even without aspirating, and unfortunately that did happen in this case. Um, 392 patients had to be notified of potential exposure, and there were new cases of hepatitis C and hepatitis B identified. Similar instances of providers using unsafe injection practices, even when their intentions were good, resulted in MRSA outbreaks in Arizona and Delaware in 2012. In Arizona, three patients were treated, and unfortunately, one passed away. In Delaware, it was a medication shortage that led providers to attempting to stretch their, their limited resources that much further. And I, I think we can all sympathize with this, as no one would want their patients to be without the medications they need. Uh, but this example is a good reminder that deviating from safe injection practices simply isn't worth the risk to patient safety. In 2017, New Jersey experienced an outbreak of bacterial infections associated with a pain management clinic. 41 patients ended up with staph and strep infections. 29 of the 41 ended up needing surgery due to their septic arthritis. There were a number of infection control breaches identified, including improper hand hygiene and med prep, use of single-dose vials for multiple patients, and use of improperly labeled or expired multi-dose vials. On this slide, we can see a 10-year timeline of New York State's work on these situations involving several different types of breaches and outbreaks. I'd like to draw your attention to some of the figures in the rightmost column, which show the number of patients who had to be notified of potential exposure in each situation. I think it's important that we recognize the time, cost, and human capital required to make each of these notifications, let alone the rest of the investigation steps. Additionally, I think it's important to recognize the human element in each of these situations. So, you know, the anxiety, the worry that each patient must endure as they wait for their lab results. So even if these don't result in cases of transmission of pathogens, patients are being harmed. Even with the media attention around safe injection practices and keeping in mind some of the cases that we just reviewed, a common misconception is that injection safety is not a problem at my healthcare facility or that doesn't happen here. Another misconception is that all healthcare providers know about this issue and act accordingly. Fortunately, that's simply not the case. In 2010, the Premier Safety Institute uh, surveyed over 5,000 healthcare professionals about their injection practices. These professionals were points of contact at their facility uh, for preparing or administering medication to patients. Among those surveyed, they found that 1% sometimes or always reuse a syringe on a second patient. 1% sometimes or always reuse a multi-dose vial for additional patients after accessing, accessing it with a used syringe, and 6% use single-dose or single-use vials on more than one patient. I would give a brief pause here, as I'm sure several of you have dropped your jaws or are yelling at the screen, but unfortunately, this isn't all. In 2017, the same institute surveyed 690 healthcare professionals across eight states, including 370 physicians. Over 12% of physicians reported that reuse of syringes on more than one patient occurs in their workplace. Over 4% of those physicians said that this usually or always occurs and over 3% strongly agreed that this is an acceptable practice. More than 4% strongly agreed that reusing a syringe to access a medication vial is an acceptable practice, and more than 8% of physicians strongly agree that using single-dose vials for more than one patient is acceptable. Physicians aren't the only ones. Of the 320 nurses surveyed, 3% reported that syringe reuse on multiple patients occurs in their workplace. Over 1% agreed that reusing a syringe to access a medication vial is acceptable, and over 7% strongly agreed that using single-dose vials for more than one patient is acceptable. While these percentages aren't huge, or while these numbers may seem small, if we consider the reach that even just a single provider can have in their community, we can really appreciate how even small numbers of providers deviating from safe injection practices can po pose a significant threat to public health. Now we're going to shift gears a bit and focus on one subset of this larger injection safety conversation, um, specifically drug diversion. So what is drug diversion? Um, it can be defined as a kind of like a medical and legal concept involving the transfer of uh, legally prescribed controlled substances from the individual for whom it was prescribed to another person for illicit use. And 
As shown in this image, this is often talked about in the context of healthcare personnel diverting for personal use related to substance use disorder. Tampering is the term used to describe the actions a provider who is diverting will take to cover up their actions. This might include things like refilling medication vials or pre-filled syringes with water to conceal the fact that medication has been withdrawn. As shown in this image, that can lead to supply contamination and downstream exposures to patients. It's important to note that the opioid epidemic is closely tied to these behaviors and the trends we see in them. Additionally, we have to appreciate that healthcare providers are not immune to the pressures or other risk factors that might contribute to the emergence of substance use disorder. Unfortunately, even just this subset of unsafe injection practices continues to produce headlines, and some of these can be pretty shocking. Surgeons and anesthesiologists being found unconscious, hundreds of patients potentially being exposed, surgical patients not receiving proper sedation or pain management, and many more. So what can you do about all of this? Well, you can take action. Start these conversations with your team. Make sure that the relevant protocols are being reviewed and kept up to date. And even though at times this feels like a common sense topic, it's important to keep these conversations going and the concepts of injection safety at the front of our minds. We've heard too many stories throughout this presentation about what happens if we don't. The stakes are simply too high and the risk to our careers, the facilities that employ us, and most importantly, the health of our patients is just too great. One way you can stay up on the latest information about injection safety is by engaging with the One and Only Campaign, which is an initiative led by the CDC and the Safe Injection Practices Coalition, or SIPC. The campaign was launched in response to the type of outbreaks we reviewed earlier, and its major goals are to improve provider understanding and implementation of safe injection practices, and thereby protect patients as they engage with healthcare and receive injections. In addition to receiving updates and educational materials, CDC and the One and Only campaign have a number of tools and other resources available to you, like the injection safety checklist shown here. Um, this could be a useful addition to existing efforts, like hand hygiene compliance auditing or new employee competency demonstrations, or it could simply be used on its own or shown in med prep areas as a helpful visual reminder. Again, several different types of tools and resources are available through CDC in the One and Only campaign, from checklists and videos to providers to public-facing brochures and posters. I encourage each of you to visit each of these websites and continue learning more about safe injection practices. Remember that this is an issue we all have stake in, and that even if our intentions are good, letting injection safety slip from our focus can result in significant harm. This is my contact information. If you have any follow-up questions or would like more information, please don't hesitate to reach out.